this liturgical season of Lent encourages us also to do some spiritual spring cleaning. It's a time to uh, basically get back to the basics. Prayer, fasting, almsgiving are things we've been hearing about the first few weeks of Lent. Uh, and uh, they're a hallmark of Christian living, but especially emphasized in the Lenten season. Another thing that helps us get back to the basics that's emphasized even more during Lent, of course, is uh, repenting, penance, the sacrament of reconciliation. Another key aspect of spiritual renewal. And uh, this morning's a good chance, uh, opportunity for us, especially with the first reading, to review uh, the Ten Commandments, which are... Uh, uh, basically one of the cornerstones of our uh, Christian living. And uh, a more thorough examination of these uh, commandments, I would encourage you to look at the Catechism of the Catholic Church, which does a great job of really going in-depth with each one. But I'd like to give you a very abbreviated version of that examination today. I, the Lord, am your God. You shall have no strange gods before me. Basically, what and whom do we worship? What and whom takes up the majority of our time, our thoughts, our focus? What or whom is most important? This commandment is really vital, the most important, the most basic, because... Uh, when we get this one wrong, everything else uh, starts going off track. What or whom do we worship? What things take priority? Wealth, power, earthly pleasures, prestige, places of honor, celebrity, charismatic or cultic personalities. All these can become false gods and others as well. It says in this first uh, reading that uh, I am a jealous God. Uh, we could easily mistake that as well jealousy is a sin, of course it is, and God is being very petty here, but not really. What it really means is God is jealous for our sake. God is jealous for our own good. He doesn't want us to go off the rails. So God wants us to put the true God before all else so that we are on the right track for the secret of happiness. Because when we get off, we're not on the track for the secret of happiness. So I am the Lord your God. You shall not have strange gods before me is basically saying worship the one true God. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. We could say, well, that means don't swear, especially don't swear using God's name. And there is something true to that, but uh, it's deeper than that. Don't manipulate God in any way. God does not exist for our needs. We exist for God. Our lives are not about us. Our lives are about God. So instead of taking the Lord's name in vain, making sure that we praise God, certainly with our lips, but with our works, our words, our actions, our attitudes, may our lives praise God. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. If God is truly number one in our lives, how do we show it? Do we set a time, a day for God, a time for God? There was a day when the, the culture made this easier when they closed things on Sunday. Obviously that has pretty much gone by the wayside but uh, so we have to try harder, I guess, today to take time for God, to set a special day for God. How do we order that special day? And throughout the week even, do we take time for mass? Do we take time for adoration? Do we take advantage of things like the 
parish mission, which begins next weekend, or uh, faith studies, Bible studies, all types of ways that we can take time for God, and many ways that we can do this personally. And even if we can't connect in person like we've been used to because of this pandemic, are we taking time to uh, get on the other side of the camera and view that way? Taking time for God. When I was born in 1960, 19, or 97% of people claim some belief in God or some participation in religion. Today, 27% of people uh, claim nothing, no formalized faith practices at all. And I think we are bearing the fruits of that. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. To remember to take time for God. All our life is uh, a gift from God, so it's certainly uh, to take, cut out some time for God only seems right and only keeps us on the right track. Honor your father and mother. Obviously, this could be seen strictly as devotion to parents, which is important, uh, but it's really about uh, honoring family. Children honoring their parents, parents honoring their, uh, taking care of their children. And uh, it's also, a, there's a broader sense to it about uh, honoring institutions that do good for society, uh, honoring the church, honoring our country, honoring other institutions that have provided uh, a basis for uh, good society. The opposite of this, of course, is to simply be focused on my rights, my opinions, my, 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 oh my. Honor family, honor church, honor country, honor those things that support a good society. We need to do that. You shall not kill. Sometimes people come to confession and say, well, I haven't killed anyone. I don't know if I'm supposed to give them a gold star for that. Uh, basically, all life belongs to God. We could reduce this commandment to, uh, I haven't committed an intentional homicide. Uh, hopefully we haven't. But uh, there's so many things that are connected to this one of the big ones is abortion. Three, 800, 800,000 abortions this past year. I know the number of deaths from COVID, uh, half a million, is uh, startling and certainly something to catch your attention and for us to mourn appropriately, and we should. But 800,000 deaths to abortion this past year some, for some reason, does not get the same headline, but it should. It's, uh, and then when you compound that in the past 50 years, 73 million deaths, uh, I think it's easily our nation's greatest tragedy. And it brings about so many other tragedies. Euthanasia, just as respect for the dignity of people in general. And it is tied with health care. It is tied with uh, respect for science and medical research. It is tied for respect for the deceased. It's tied for, for respect for safeguarding peace and uh, trying to avoid war at all costs. It's, uh, it's connected with economic justice. And uh, basically what it all comes down to is you shall not kill. Don't be supporting a culture of death, but support a culture of life. Promote life, promote, promote the dignity of life, promote the dignity of all creation. You shall not commit adultery. Certainly this connects with the violation of marriage vows, also violation of ordination vows with the uh, theology being that uh, priests are, and deacons are married to the church, but also uh, it's any violation, really, of our call to chastity. 
sexuality often is uh, falsely seen as something that belongs to us, but uh, properly seen, it should be seen as one of the great gifts that God has given us that needs to be protected, preserved, to be connected to covenants. Really, thou shalt not commit adultery is about thou shalt honor covenants, thou shalt embrace covenants, thou shalt see how important covenants are important to human living, and especially the most sacred of covenants. You shall not steal. Obviously, that says don't take what isn't yours, but uh, there's a greater justice involved in this too, of allowing people or giving people the justice that is their due. Do I always give to others what is their due? Or do I take people for granted and not give them what is their due? Basically, the opposite of you shall not steal is you, which is not taking from society, is what do we contribute to society? That's the opposite. Don't bear false witness. This is a big one today. Um, be involved in truthful speech, but also constructive and supportive speech. Sometimes that old adage, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all, probably we'd be better off. Have a holy silence. Take time for prayer when those bad thoughts come into your head about others. Obviously, social media has been very guilty of this. It's, uh, social media has its blessings and benefits, but it's uh, become a battleground for uh, the worst type of uh, hate speech, really. Uh, and cancel culture is certainly connected with this, basically set out on wiping things out, destroying others' lives, vicious speech, vicious intent, Basically, hatred just spilling out. No desire for unity, only divisiveness. The opposite of bearing false witness is building up our brothers and sisters through our speech, through our support, being generous, being loving, versus just spewing hate. Thou shalt not covet. The last two really kind of go together. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. Basically, stop desiring what other people have or appreciate what we have more completely. Our advertising culture, our consumerism culture doesn't help. Uh, not that that's all bad, but it can run amok. We want things simply because others desire them. And then we begin to confuse true needs, true basic needs, with wants. And we say, I got to have it. I just got to have it. Got to have it. Got to have this. Got to have that. Got to have her. Got to have him. A great examination of conscience. Uh, be grateful for what you have. And uh, so just as uh, thou shall not bear false witness, the opposite of that, or of taking, is being generous. Well, the opposite of coveting is being grateful. I think the Ten Commandments uh, every Lent is a very important examination. Uh, certainly, I'd encourage you also to look at uh, the Beatitudes and uh, the Catechism's treatment on that, which is a, a great examination.